let's talk about a bad idea. There's been a kerfuffle in the uh, retro gaming community the past week or so. Um, bad idea. So before I get into this, the actual idea itself at the base level is okay. I, I think someone wanted to do a world, a, a recreation of the Nintendo World Championships cart, Nintendo World Championships 35th anniversary. Well, um, it's being put together by the people who were uh, in the original Nintendo World Championships, or who, who were winners, uh, Robin Mihara and uh, Thor Ackerland. Well, it looks like Thor is part of this, and, and Robin Mahara competed, and, I, and Robin also helped uh, found the classic uh, Tetris World Championship uh, that we know now and did the uh, XC of Order mm -hmm. um, back in 2010. Right. The Doc Mary and I actually hosted uh, the, the first event back then in 2010 with Chris Tang. So I, I know uh, some of these folks. I know Robin. Um, reproductions of the Nintendo World Championships cart have existed for a long, long time, um, since the early 2000s, I think. Um, the ones I'm mostly aware of would be oh, five of oh, six uh, a little bit later like nine ten uh, Okay, you know uh, The one that that I I own the retro USB one from back in the day. Okay. Yeah, that that that's probably better My my sense of time is a little off um, And you know because at the base of it the Nintendo World Championships cart is kind of a fun thing to play and I think everyone who's who's listening to this or watching it knows what the nintendo world championships cartridge is it's a collection of it's it's three games with three goals you have what is it three minutes and 21 seconds five minutes and 21 seconds uh, i know 621 621 and you know you, you it was part of a competition um and there are you know very very few of them in existence what there was 26 gold ones and then however many gray ones we, few hundred, we few hundred, three fifty or so. So, it's an interesting item, and like I said, reproductions have existed, and I'm personally fine with the, with those reproductions existing. The interesting twist to this one, and I think it's kind of neat, was that this was going to the 35th anniversary edition was not going to be um, just a standard reproduction. It was going to be essentially a pro version. It's a ROM hack. It's a ROM hack, and so. Instead of starting in 1-1, one, one, you would start in 8-1 for the Super Mario Brothers portion. You would start on uh, level 3 for Rad Racer, and um, Tetris starts at level 8. You can also customize your time limits anywhere from 5 minutes to 15 minutes. And at the base of it, I think this is, you know, a fun idea, uh, especially, you know, coming from the, the, the minds that were initially part of, uh, you know, part of it uh if you're playing this you know it, it is at some point you figure out the best the best route the best way to act and you're just trying to um perfect perfect that this gives you something new this is something yeah, for, new for people to chew on and figure out the best way to get the best for, score for super mario brothers within, yes for yeah so it's interesting to me in that regard now we come to the, the part that uh, completely blows my mind wide open, and I'm not trying to sound particularly insulting, but they decided then, instead of just the way these things usually go, you know, kind of being, you know, under the, under, under the radar and, you know, I mean, people say, yeah, which is great. It's fine. Um, they decided to kickstart this. I have no idea why anyone would think that kickstarting this was was a good idea um i mean you've got it, it's it's literally a cartridge it doesn't matter if it's a rom hack it's it's mario and then uh rad, rad racer, racer and, and tetris i mean three games three that, nintendo published games three nintendo published games from a company that is notorious for cease and desists and the copyright shit here isn't my concern whatever like i said i have no problem with this existing it's why would you do it so blatantly and out in the open there was absolutely no way this was going to stay up on kickstarter no i found out about this after i came back somehow I, I, this escaped me that i guess i must have launched when i was at socal last weekend and then when i came back um, I heard about it, and I said to myself, I'll be shocked if this isn't taken down in 48 hours. And it lasted like three or four days. I think it lasted like four days before it was taken down. I was shocked it lasted that long. And it, and it got about, I think it got about $20,000 or so. Oh, it broke. Um, it, it, it had broken. It, it's, um, so, it smashed. It, 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 yeah, it says it smashed its Kickstarter goal in the time that it was up. 
So, so let's talk about what they offered here first. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I will try not to, I have to cover this as a professional podcast. I, and I know people involved with this, but it is what it is. It's a bad situation. We got to talk about it. So they offered two versions. They offered a gray cart and they offered a gold cart, 35, uh, versions of the uh, 35 of the gold one right that i think or individually numbered you can request a number the kickstarter is taken down we, we can read the the complaint from nintendo uh on the copyrighted grounds but so so um they offered the the gray cart for about 150 dollars for the standard and 375 dollars for for the the gold one um and the carts were all going to be signed by thor ackerlin who uh, was one of the winners of the original and wc and rod mahara um, who is, is doing the Kickstarter here. So, um, that's what the goal was. And then it got taken down on that Thursday. So, um, I'm like, I, I am shocked that this was a kick. Like I, I couldn't believe it that this was a Kickstarter. Like I was, I was almost at a loss for words that they thought they could kickstart this. It in Nintendo. just seems like one of the craziest things you could do. Like when 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 people first started doing these sort of games, and we'll say late two thousand early two thousand tens, when they were doing their um, people would buy the prototypes and make you know they'd make illegal yeah. 50, fifty runs or hundred run you know and sell them on Nintendo Age. Like a lot of people did that. Um, the world was entirely different like thirteen fourteen years ago when it came to this. Sure. Stuff. The, the the retro gaming scene was so much smaller in terms of like the interest for these sort of things. Mm -hmm. This is before Nintendo even cared to even acknowledge a lot of the things. Nintendo did absolutely nothing for the 25th anniversary of the release of the release of the NES. That's one of the reasons why we decided to do the oh, NES yeah. marathon. That, that's, uh, that was the in initial. That was the initial seed of it. You might think we're crazy. Go back and look if Nintendo did anything for th for that. They did nothing yeah, they, back they, then. They did not. And now, and within the past, you want to say, eight, nine, ten years, Nintendo, uh, you want to say credit or not, it's business, but at least they have embraced a lot of the retro stuff and the older consoles. In Better than ways. they used to. Because they did. Yeah. Uh, they've had the NES Classic, SNES Classic, Nintendo Switch Online uh, stuff going on. They brought back the NWC for two different competitions. We talked about that. They, they've at least try to acknowledge what, like, oh, we have a past and there is money in acknowledging this and sort of like diving into it. And of course, they're doing the N Nintendo World Championships NES edition this year as well to sort of capitalize on nostalgia in the past. So Nintendo's at a spot now. Well, so the, where, I mean, I forgot to mention that too. It's not only just crazy that it was on Kickstarter, it's crazy that they did it at the, the time, time they did. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, so Nintendo is now, Obviously, they were aware of more of this stuff happening because 15 years ago, there weren't really many, there were almost any video game documentaries. There was like two. Sure. Uh, there was almost no uh, books about video games like there are now. There's tons now that come out. Um, we are at a different, and now obviously all the retro, there's been a ton of retro system releases and re-releases and scams and, and legit good products. This didn't exist 15 years ago. We're in a different world now. Yeah, it's not, so, a, it's not a niche hobby anymore. So I'm not... I'm I'm trying I'll try to be as nice as possible to the folks that are behind the Kickstarter. I really think they thought they were living in a different time period where they can get away with this. Sure. Otherwise, how could you put this on Kickstarter? How can you? Knowing that Nintendo has a team dedicated to scouring the internet for projects not only on Kickstarter, but off Kickstarter. Fan games that come out that they shut down. Yeah. They are always, uh, like they, they, like the Metroid uh, remake that they shut down, and all the Pokemon the, I was going to say the various um, Pokemon games. And um, so Nintendo's always looking out for this stuff because they have to protect copyright or to keep it and trademark that's part of one of the one of the things about the copyright is that you protect it by you have to enforce it otherwise some company go well you didn't enforce it and i can use it and a judge or jury might say you're right well it's not important to you you are enforcing it and obviously nintendo has the means to do that um for this to come out like this i i this was like something out of 2010 11 i first saw i was like this is something from 15 years ago yeah that they're trying to get away with now like it, it was it was mind-boggling to me um, that I saw it. Let's, uh, I'm going to read the complaint real quick. Uh, that Kickstarter, uh, submitted by Wildwood Law Group LLC in Portland. So that's N Nintendo's firm. Um, 
Description of copyrighted material. Nintendo owns copyrights in all aspects of its Super Mario Brothers and Rad Racer video games, including but not limited to its characters, audio, visual works, and software covered by uh, registration numbers. And they have the registration numbers for Rad Racer uh, and uh, Mario character. They do not they do not list Tetris in here, which is interesting. Uh, description of infringing material. The reported campaign displays images of Nintendo's Mario character and portions of the audio, visual works from Nintendo's uh, Super Mario Brothers and Rad Racer video games in connection with the creation and distribution of un authorized software that incorporates copyright protected material from Nintendo's video games in violation of Nintendo's rights. I mean, they used Mario in the, the not, not uh, obviously it's in the game, but they used Mario on the art. He's, he's with on a the, gray mustache, but still it's they, Mario. It's clearly Mario. They were asking to get shut down. Like this was, there was no way around it that this was going to get through. Like no way around. Right. And I'm, I'm not, or I'm not caping for Nintendo. Uh, we've disagreed on, on Nintendo stuff. Oh, I'm uh, not either. I, I, but, again, I'll, I'll state but, this has nothing to do with the copyright shit for me. I don't care about that. I just think that it was a well, I just think it was a very silly, silly move. Nintendo, in their defense, are usually pretty fair when it comes to these sort of things in terms of uh, a fair use from my oh, own well, experience, fair use, sure. from my own experience and knowing uh, a couple of book Kickstarters that Nintendo contacted and say, hey, listen. There's things we'd like you to change, and then we'll allow it. And they worked with them. They didn't just say, oh, you can't do it. Right. Sega, they're the bad guys when it comes to this stuff, more so than, than not when it comes to uh, using their trademark or for years. Because because Sega has not allowed books to come out that I know of. Nintendo has not done that to my knowledge for the most part. They, they play ball. They realize that, hey, um, you're not really doing something that we couldn't sell. And, you know, you're being you're being fair to us. You're you're you're. You're playing within the boundaries of our sandbox. This obviously was not. Nintendo historically will come after you um, and come after, in the past, the biggest lawsuits is when people have monetized their games. Yeah, monetizing it is when they get... That's when they do not fuck around. Very cranky. Um, when it, whether it's paying for... If you pay to subscribe to a ROM site, they shut that shit down. They, that was several years right. ago. That was the one case. It was like I Heart ROMs or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Um, the recent uh, emulator, a Switch emulator, where there was people were paying for early access. Oh yeah, yeah. And, for and, for yes. And then and the, they were saying that they weren't doing that. And then the Discord it was like, hey, you can play this game or like games that weren't out yet. So Nintendo uh, is not going to play around with that, nor should they, when it comes to that stuff. Um, they got to protect their business on some level when it comes to that. Um, so so this. Um, is unfortunate, um, and I I wish the story ends there, but it doesn't for me because th this was promoted by YouTubers, sure, and this is where um, we have to have a conversation about this. Uh, be just because, and I'm going to try not to, you know, I'm nothing personal uh, because I know the folks that like promoted this, but the folks that promote this have to realize we have a very the community has a very precarious relationship with Nintendo when it comes to uh, this stuff and fair use. And it's obviously, you know, we promote a lot of their stuff and they give us stuff to promote, but you have to realize that you're promoting something that's not only just illegal, but Nintendo's going to shut down. Right. The Nintendo's aware of all of this stuff. That's not a good business decision um, to associate yourself with something that is going to make as a company now. angry that you are also largely covering in your videos yeah and and again we're not caping for nintendo but this is reality this is how things work not the way you want them to work um so when you promote uh, a kickstarter or a product that you probably should know is dubious on its surface that it's not going to survive it's not good it's it's not good for business and it also puts a spotlight in a way on all of us we're like nintendo sees this stuff happen and you're like are uh, they going to look for more of it? Are they going to then not trust the people that sure. are promoting this or associate? You know what I mean? Like you do not want to put a target on your back in any way. And as someone that ha is now doing, you know, another book that is uh, fair use, like I'm scared of doing any of this stuff yeah. that I feel is perfectly legal and fine. And now with this stuff that's happening, uh, it makes us all look like not throwing us all in the same pot, but it makes me feel more nervous than I should be. Is that fair? Like it makes you feel like, like is Nintendo going to look after this stuff more than they should now? Or are they going to come right, down? Is it going to be? Is it going to put uh, them on edge and they're going to yeah. come down harder on other things? Are they going to come down? Is Nintendo going to be forced to say we got to look into this stuff more 
because of this blatant, uh, like illegal product that never would fly in any court of law. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, so now that's what I think about. And I shouldn't, I should not have to think about these things because of something like this. That That's, um, I'm just, my, my, I was almost at a loss when I saw this Kickstarter. No, yeah. I was at a loss. I, I was just like, it's kind of crazy. Uh, if I, if I see, uh, Rob and I, I honestly want to ask him, like, how did you think you'd be able to get away with this? Like, because now a target's on you and Nintendo probably will not, they'll probably just cease and desist and that's it. They're not going to actually take you to court, but let's just say you, they did like they could. Right. And then now what you got to get a lawyer, you're going to go through this and, and like, you're going to lose it's open and shut. So I'm trying not to be like the scold of the retro game community, but I just like, we got to think about these things a little bit more. That's all. Like we j just have to. Yeah, no, I agree.